Anime Presents. That time I tuned into a podcast just to listen to somebody shill for a publisher. I'm your host, Zeke Changers, along with editor and chief extraordinaire of Honey's Anime, Alfonso Ortiz. How you doing, Fonzie? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? Oh, we're just uh, sitting basking in the sunshine here in Florida as the rest of the Northeast is freezing their butts off, but can't, can't say it. That bothers me one bit. Well... That's the American dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's me and every other retiree down here. Yep. Okay. All right. A quick recap on how we do things here. Uh, and that time I tuned into a podcast just to listen to someone chill for a publisher. I'll start off with the description of a manga or light novel that I just read and give you my honest opinion. Then it's Fonzie's turn. And then we'll share a title we will call Honey Chance Pick. Something that we think everyone will enjoy. You ready there, Fonzie? Oh, yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go with a light novel I read recently and really enjoyed it. There's no way a side character like me could be popular, right? Okay, you got this guy. His name is uh, Tomoki Yuji. He's Mm. a second year student with the most, with uh, not the most gentle countenance. Okay. Uh, he kind of is intimidating. He looks a little thuggish compared to other people. But however, as often is the time in manga, he's not the most violent or is a dangerous guy at all. Um, he's just your average guy. Okay. He just happens to look intimidating. Uh, the average student, on the other hand, steers clear of him, except for Ike. Mm-hmm. Or I guess it would be, would it be E.K.? E.K.? Yeah. Ike. Uh, Horama, who is the typical protagonist type, the perfect guy with no flaws whatsoever. Uh, he is Mr. Popular. Everyone likes him. Uh, no one understands his and uh, Yuji's relationship, but those two are uh, the closest of friends. Now, Tamaki, uh, Yuji seems pretty at ease with his position in school. He sees himself as a background character. He is Harama's friend. That is how he sees himself. He's not his necessarily his own person Mm -hmm. in the, in relation to everyone else. He's just that big guy that is Harama's friend. And he's kind of at ease with that. Uh, This is not a problem for him whatsoever. And his life is pretty normal. Mm. Hanging out with Harama when he can or being a member of the Mm -hmm. uh, going home club. But then things get complicated. Um, Of course. Inter Toka. Yes. Inter Toka. Harama's younger sister, who is pretty. Uh, She is sweet. She is kind. She is popular. She is the perfect girl. And when it comes to Yuji, all she can say is, I just love you so much, senpai. And the problem is her love, her kindness, her perfect veneer is all fake. Ooh, you got to hate that. Uh, That's going to break are, a lot of hearts. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're not going to we're not going to um, give away too much about her plans for Yuji. But uh, we do hope those fake feelings do change. Um, think of her a lot like a foul mouth version of uh, Inora, Inahora, uh, from uh, my team romantic comedy Inora. snafu. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Eesh. She is. She is that. I'm going to project this complete, sweet, soft, and gentle personality to everyone but Yuji, and Yuji understands that she is like. She's foul mouth. Mm-hmm. She he knows what's the up. People she, she, <laughs> the people she hangs around with, she's she just can barely stand. But it's all part of this image of being the perfect girl. Uh, and uh, she is his underclassman. She is a first year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so thing. And according to you know uh, Horma, uh, uh, yeah, Horma is like. He's all for this. He's like, my good friend and my little sister. This is great. 
you know, because he doesn't see that his little sister is uh-huh. what she is either. Is it, Does he have, like, any sort of, like, a CISCON thing? Or is it just, like, naiveness just, he just doesn't see? It's just naiveness. He just sees his little sister okay. as his darling little sister. Oh, cool. uh, it's, it's not necessarily a CISCON thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but then things get even more complicated. Nice. Uh, we also have a school idol and the ch- and who was also Harama's childhood friend Ooh. starts showing interest in Yuji. <sighs> okay. Okay, so now we have a demi love triangle or quadrilateral. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Which makes things a little more complicated and poor Yuji who had a nice quiet life up until recently things start spinning a little more out of his control. He's trying to handle, he tries to go with the flow. He tries to not uh, get wrapped up in everything uh, that's going on around him. Uh But we then get the, get the creme de la creme happen to poor Yuji. The hot, 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 hot teacher making a play for him as well. Sensei. A sensi, a sexy sensei, really uh, finds that he is like this strong, noble creature, and she's completely smitten. At least that's what we're led to believe in the first volume. So his Fuji. life, yeah, his life gets very complicated very fast. Um, I really enjoyed this story so far. Uh, Man, UG, never say never. <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 feels. I I look back at my tweets, and when I was reading it for the first time, I wrote, "People, this story is good. It feels like a blend between the '80s film Can't Buy Me Love and my teenage romantic comedy Snafu. Mm-hmm. The heroine reminds me of lot a lot of Anora from Snafu, and people are like, "Okay, then I'm gonna read it." Because like they, they want more they want more of our uh, devious little vixen. So uh, and this was the closest they could get now that Snafu is wrapped up. But hey, I see. I see. Yeah. That's How interesting. Often? That's really interesting because believe it or not, I've read several other, at least maybe three to four other manga volumes out there this year that have the same premise or setup where it's like a, a love tangle between a group of friends and that's just, a great way to put it love tangle yeah <laughs> yeah it, a tangle like triangle or you know you're getting tangled up or something like however you want to put it tangle like you're dancing there's complications in it regardless so <laughs> it's like hey i mean i i have witnessed the many real life versions of this uh especially in the yeah Growing I've, up, I've, I've been in a circle of, of this once where yeah, it was reciprocating towards me, and then I was kind of like, nope, I was like, yeah, <laughs> don't drag me into this shit. <laughs> become growing into a real adult in my first job, it, mm-hmm. my first main job in a newsroom. You found out quickly that newsrooms are incestuous. It is like, um, really, you know, yes. So I, I mean, I know at least five five couples that um, out of that newsroom have ended up married, but it's still just that or those early days because you're all young, uh-huh. you're in your early twenties, you don't make any money, and you live with each other, and your only friends are the people you work with. Yeah. So yeah, it 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 can get like that, and um, you find a lot of very interesting. Uh, hookups i can i, mean, I can admittedly, understand that admittedly I... I found my wife in the newsroom so oh. it's not all bad no absolutely not not like that that's awesome yeah that's, yeah but uh, like i said it kind of reminds me of can't buy me love from the 80s and mm-hmm. not often do you hear a patrick duffy movie reference <sighs> um but uh yeah can't buy me love um and uh snafu because it, it has this good mix uh, and the characters are pretty interesting. Uh, you feel sorry for Yuji on many moments, but he's not necessarily that 
it's not like the Yuki Ritos of the harem mm-hmm. world where you're just like, oh my God, I want to kick you um, because you're just <laughs> so wishy-washy. He you. just seems overwhelmed because his life is not. He's like, I am character B. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this should be happening to my friend, not me. Not Yeah, that yeah. Kind of, that kind of thing. So I'll be interested in to see where this goes in the next couple volumes. Yeah, it sounds actually very interesting. I'm kind of curious. I mean, I would understand that's pretty interesting for a lot of people. Um, albeit those that kind of went through the same situation, but we don't know the outcome. And God, God, God would only hope that their outcome wasn't, you know horrible <laughs> or anything <laughs> that it would draw up like really bad memories or something like that but it does it does seem interesting i like the i like the entanglement of relationships that are crossing in between that because I, like i said a few of the manga that i read recently this year were were very much like that and some some of them had like interesting twists with it um but man yeah okay that's pretty cool i'm down to check that and, out and yeah i i sadly don't personally re get to read a whole lot of first uh read a whole lot of first volumes Uh at this point because i am so stacked up with series that i am currently reading which are on like volume nine Uh things like that and so i'm spending a lot of time just trying to keep up with the ones that i really like Mm -hmm. and so finding time to squeeze in one uh is uh has been kind of difficult but i'm happy that i uh squeezed this one in because it 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 really gave me a chuckle nice awesome all right well what 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 have you been reading recently oh i've read i've read i've read a few i've read a few that it's kind of hard to to pick one between three that i was actually reading right now um Gosh, well, I'm gonna mention two because they're kind of quick, actually, and then I'll stick to right, one go ahead. to one that I was actually reading, which which is uh, something that I, I do like a lot right now. Um, so, first one that I did check out because it was something that I was on my mind since you mentioned it was the Sorta Online Progressive, but this one yeah. is the Bar Carol of Roth or Froth. I'm sorry, and so it's a little side story, but it seems to be taken back uh, in the beginning of the first SAO. Where okay. Asuna and Kirito are together, it seems like they defeated it because there is um, this situation where I can't grasp exactly where it is on the timeline, and I haven't done too much research because I like the suspense of it. But um, I can't tell if this is taken after they defeated Sao or if it's before, like in the beginning when they first kind of uh, were brought up. But you don't sense that feeling. They are in Aincrat. Yeah, right? yeah. You don't, you don't sense that feeling, though, that if they mess up, they're going to die. And it's like, oh, you know, they're, they're not taking it as serious as you would feel. But also, they're OP. So it's kind of hard to this judge that. This, and this isn't like uh, part of the, uh, what is the hollow realization? No, 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 no. Art? This, yeah. yeah. Apparently, this isn't. So the way it starts out is that uh, they go into a, uh, the game, Sao for Ironcraft, okay. and basically it's after a beta. See now, okay. I don't know if it was a beta patch after the whole situation happened. Yeah. <laughs> um, and they defeated it, and so you know it went into a beta where they're testing things and restructuring things, probably. Mm-hmm. Or if this was in the beginning, all we know is that. They went into this world, and based on the beta, Kirito says that things have been changed, and they're updated. So now he's kind of in the world where he's being blindsided left and right, because obviously huh. things aren't the same. So there's, That's... yeah, so there's this, you know, unfamiliar setting that you're gonna you're, you're in, and it is giving that off, so I kind of like that. Uh, again, if I did some research, I probably would know more and have a better understanding, but I like the suspense of this, <laughs> so it's really cool. Uh, but yeah, that one's basically um, summarizes that first volume. They're traveling. They're trying to to get to one place so they can uh, uh, explore the world, basically. And in doing that, they're on their first main quest to try and defeat a boss, which was the boss that Kirito came up against but couldn't defeat in the beta, I think, is what he had mentioned. Uh, and yeah, that's basically the gist of the first volume. 
It's it's nice. The art is beautiful. I love the drawing That's nice. of it. Yeah, it's it's really really good. But for this side story, it is the first for the creator, and he basically is like this is the first time I'm ever doing this. It's so intense. It's it's kind of putting a, a lot of pressure, <laughs> <laughs> which is understandable. I mean, you know, it's a big title. You're he talk about it is it, so. This is this is not uh, uh, Kirigawa. This is somebody else who's filling in or is this him yeah no this is a different one this is a, a artist um so well that's good that's is, what i've been hoping for too anyway oh, okay. yeah 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 because if there's if there's no way he's going and like we'll be end up in the world same world as with J.R.R. R. martin with you know nothing ever being finished <laughs> yeah <at the> rate. <laughs> that's true Things you gotta get other, so you if, gotta if get he can people on that if he can spread things out a little bit, I'm fine because yeah. I'd like to see where this story, <laughs> where the story progresses because he's just, yeah, he's exactly at the rate he's going. It, it, I, I'm going to be, you know, pushing daisies by the time they get to the hundredth floor of Einkrad and progressive. Oh man. I know. Whew. Yeah. We'll see how that turns out. I'm kind of excited for that one. Um, but this, but this one was done by Shiomi Miyoshi. He's the he's the mangaka for this series, uh, spinoff series that's coming out. And um, I mean, I'm saying it's a spinoff because it seems like it's a spinoff. I'm not too sure how attached and canon it is to the to the storyline, but it, we'll see. It's the first volume. Um, the second one that I read is the Carol and Tuesday, and uh, these both are from Yen Press. Uh, how does that? How is that with um, as a read? Simple. It's very faithful to the series. So okay. obviously, Car- Caroline Tuesday the anime came out first, and then they made the manga uh, series. And yeah, it's pretty faithful. It's very, very nice. What you can experience from, from the manga versus the the anime series is more of the art, the beautiful drawings of the characters of Caroline Tuesday, the scenery setting. It's beautiful. It's something that you can definitely appreciate a lot more. Um, obviously, since you're reading like, it, you can focus more on the story. Uh, like Brooklyn it, on Mars. Yeah, because that's what it felt like to me. Oh, they lived in. It looked like Brooklyn. Brooklyn on Mars. Uh, on yeah, Mars. You, you can kind of say that actually. It does kind of have that feel. <laughs> the, to tell you, tell you the truth, with all the buildings, <laughs> brick style buildings that they had in there. Yeah, they have that. So, so yeah, that's the gist of it. It's it's just a faithful adaptation. It's very very nice. Uh, the two differences is that obviously the series. The anime series had music that you can listen to so you had like your own little mini music videos within the series that of course is cut out because i uh, you know the translation to translate that from an animation to yeah. still imagery is it's not the same i guess you could say uh, right right well, but then but yeah you, you have you, that. Get, you see the progress uh-huh. of the plot move forward which is nice mm-hmm. yeah so you, when you see that and minus the the musical videos that they have on the series with the manga, things move a lot quicker. I think the the first volume covers maybe like about three, four uh, episodes, maybe. Oh, I might want to three, four. No, I think like five or six actually. It covers about five or six episodes, so it, it it goes through pretty quick. I have a feeling this might be maybe three, four volume series or something. Uh, okay. If if they decide kind of like to like a companion to the series. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, so yeah, so those are the two quick ones. The one I really liked a lot is We Swore to Meet in the Next Life, and that's when things got weird. And that one is from Seven Seas. It's, it's, okay. it's pretty comical. This one's great. I was, I was pretty much laughing a lot. So you have uh, the idea in this setting that, you know, when you die, you're reincarnated, and there's a possibility that if you have a loved one that you're destined to be with each other, you're going to meet each other in every afterlife from there on. So there is a knight and a princess, and the knight okay. is assigned to the princess. The princess is the most cherished and beloved being in the kingdom. She's sweet. She's kind. She's caring, helpful, and the knight is, you know, your run-of-the-mill knight that is honest and loyal and and strong and powerful but also all about keeping the peace and everything so they're in love and 
it pretty much ends with uh, the situation between him being a knight and a princess that their love can never blossom because of their uh, social uh, uh, ranks. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, their standings. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for their social standings. So they, they it, it cuts from from them saying that oh well since we can't be together it's it's heartbreaking you know in our in another life let's promise to meet up with each other and hopefully we can actually be together and love one another so that's that's where the story is taking off from and then of course obviously it cuts there's a time skip they die i, I, I i'm assuming for sure because <laughs> it is now it. modern day tokyo of japan you have to die to be reincarnated you do you do right but then i mean like I guess I was. I mean, you do die. Yeah, sure. But I, I guess I was trying to thinking like, was it was it horrible? Was it Were meaningful death? Oh. Was it like peaceful <laughs> or something? Okay, okay. All so right. yeah, like but that's just me. That's just me saying that. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah, now we're in the modern world, uh, modern day Tokyo, and the princess has been reincarnated. So she's been living in society for a while now, not forgetting her prince her knight in shiny armor and the love that they promised. And so as she's been in modern day living life, she's lived a life for 39 years and still hasn't met the prince. So she doesn't know if it's going to happen, if, if maybe he forgot and they're, they're never going to meet again. Like the fate, deci fate decided that they were, their love was just broken. It was not going to happen. So, and with, the Japanese culture and mentality of women, there is a saying that usually, you know, like if you're over the age of 25 and you're not married yet, you're going to be destined to have a hard time finding someone or you may not ever find someone. But then by the time you hit 40, you might as well just stay a single woman because you're never going to hey, find love. Hey, <laughs> hey, remember in Harry Met Sally, uh, Meg Ryan says that a woman getting married is more likely to be killed by a terrorist than get married over 30. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's right. <laughs> I would, I mean, let's, let's just say that it doesn't translate the same. Because <laughs> that one's comical. That one's fun. I would have taken yeah. that in this storyline. But with the culture, with the Japanese yeah. culture and how it is, it's it's a very serious thing. And so, like, it's a... It's when you get close to that age and a woman truly holds that in her heart, that saying... Like, it's almost as if a, a midlife crisis, you know, they're never going to be happy or find love and all that stuff. And it's like, no, no, that's not true. So this story, this book, this manga seems to be on a path to try and break that norm to at least show some sort of world where it could happen, but with a twist. Now, the twist at age 39, she's almost 40. Her birthday is coming up she's walking on the street she's about to give up and just be like forget it i'm not gonna find my prince and whatever and all of a sudden she accidentally bumps into this high school student and his friends and he's like oh my god i'm so sorry i didn't mean to bump into you you know they exchange a look and everything she doesn't think anything of it but then right away the kid turns around and a spark just happens in his brain and he all of a sudden his his, his personality his mentality changes does a 180 he turns around goes straight to her and is all like, my princess, I found you. Oh my gosh. And she's like, what are you talking about? It's me. Don't you remember? We, we were supposed to be together. We promised we'd meet each other in, the, in another life. And she's like, no way. This is a night. He's 17. She's hey, 39. Hey. And so, May, December. Yeah, right? And so that's already the first, the first twist. And there, there is another one that's going to come up, but uh, it, it doesn't really present itself so much in the, in the volume, or at least I'm not going to uh, yeah, don't spoil. explain don't spoil. or spoil too much. <laughs> but now you can actually see, because I'll leave it off there, because from the rest of the manga it, up to, to the last twist at the end, which is pretty interesting, it's all about him being a high school student and this older woman being with a younger man. Obviously, in, every, in any culture, you know, there's going to be some some descriptions <laughs> of what yeah. you know those I mean, two you, people are or what people think they would be and all that stuff you get a little of that in um in garden of words yes uh, yes that's a it, it, it the, the age difference isn't that big but you definitely get you can sense a, it yeah it's there you, yeah so this one's very obvious yeah. 
yeah so this was very obvious and they're out in society you know he really wants to be with her he really wants to be true to what they had promised and so does she it's just now they're trying to get past that whole situation her being an older woman she's not letting it go too softly him being a younger man is brushing it off to the side so naively i guess and and uh yeah comedy ensues it is hilarious (laughs) the situations they come through uh sudden outbursts of speech when they're out in public happen and it just (laughs) causes all this embarrassment and blushing and it's hilarious. She says, you know, it's great. Mathematically, he is young enough to be, you know, her child. Yes. And that is that that phrase is said several times in this first volume. <laughs> they don't want you to forget that fact because, you know, I guess otherwise the comedy wouldn't be as great. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a really good fun fun book. It's a fun manga. Yeah, we swore And, and she's a, she's an adult woman who actually looks like an adult woman, not a loli. So, you know, you have that added realism there too. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes, you do. Oh gosh, yeah, there's so there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of things to, 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 to take in as you're reading it and laughing along. It's it's really funny. Uh, yeah, so they, they poke fun at the age gap a lot. They poke fun at the fact that, you know, <laughs> this is not ladylike your kid and all this stuff and how he's just naive and wanted to be with her. And so it all translates like seeing a young kid, but you're you have the mind of an old man that i love yeah it's so it's really it's really trippy it's fun but but yeah it's great and, and the manga again uh, we swore to meet in the next life and that's when things got weird that's the title of the manga it's, well appropriately it's a manga uh, it sounds like um the most appropriate manga title uh i've heard recently you yeah. know Cause... very straightforward <laughs> yes very very straightforward okay um let's uh just quickly toss out uh the honey chan pick which is uh wizard of mickey um and you know mickey mouse is is popular globally Mm -hmm. you find him everywhere especially now you find yeah and and now you find him i mean you you find him in manga in wizards of Mm -hmm. mickey uh wizards of mickey uh is all about mickey mouse and the entire like mickey mouse gang family Mm -hmm. you know uh you know goofy and donald and such um as wizards um and we start off where mickey has been since the 1960s an apprentice wizard it is taking him a while um harry potter did it in the span of puberty but it's taking mickey the lifetime a complete lifetime to get out of apprenticeship at this point um he is he's a struggling apprentice wizard uh Mm -hmm. he his master leaves the village uh at one point and a random stranger gets his hands on this uh, this thing called dia magic which Uh is the tool that allows the village to conjure rain um and so mickey has to solve that problem mickey's also forced to enter the grand wizard tournament um where his master uh in order to free his master who is imprisoned uh by someone they thought was a friend um you get you know like i mean you get goofy you get uh you get goofy you get mickey you get donald um you as we were talking about before we started it's kind of like kingdom hearts in which you get a whole bunch Mm -hmm. of different uh characters popping in to make a cameo uh it's a very simple easy to digest plot it is something that you can if you've never read manga before and you're intimidated about the the way it is Mm -hmm. done like oh it's not a comic book well in many ways and shapes and forms it is and you Mm -hmm. just don't have to worry about color pictures um and then Mm -hmm. uh it's a great entry level say you want to get or you have that kid in your family that you're like i want to corrupt them and turn them into a weeb this is your this is your entrance drug give them a mickey manga and see where that leads next thing you know you're you're going from mickey you know you and then you start them into one piece 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, 20 years have passed and they've got statues filling a, a, a bookcase somewhere in their home. So, uh, yep. yeah, M- Mickey could be your entrance, your entrance drug into the, yeah, <laughs> into the <does>. manga verse. <laughs> yeah, no, like you said, um, it definitely sounds easy to di- digest. A nice little entry yeah. manga title to, to get into. Yeah, and it, and uh, yeah, we are recording this uh, over the holidays, um, and so one of the things that we think about, I I know in my family is you know Mickey's Christmas Carol, Mickey Mouse is very much a part of the holidays. When I first went to Disney World was back in 1983, it was over the ho- uh, over the holidays. Um, so mm-hmm. uh, it, when I think of Mickey Mouse, I do have a Christmas vibe, a, a childhood vibe, and. I think that's a, that's understandable. It, it's it's a big chunk of not only my childhood, but a lot of other kids, a lot of other people's childhood. So mm-hmm. it, it's a nostalgia trip for some of us, but it's also, a, like I said, a great entrance. You know, get them reading Mickey, and then drop in a Sailor Moon, or mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. thing, things like that. So yeah, it's 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 a good way to it's a good way to introduce people who may think that manga is this mysterious thing that they don't understand when it really is just a story told it with pictures. Oh, wonderful. Right. Yeah, that's nice. And especially since it being a nice title uh, as an entry read for manga, a lot of people, I mean, if you do something like that and you, and you read this, it'll be perfect because I can imagine how reading manga and if it is, set up in the same format as a Japanese manga, you'd have to read, you know, left to, or right to left. Yeah, I, right I to it. left, top to bottom. So yeah. a lot a lot of manga titles do have reference pictures that teach you that, yes. but then you don't learn it or see it until the end of the manga volume after reading it. <laughs> and then like maybe maybe you like reading it wrong and then you get to that part and you're all like, what the hell? Why isn't it in the beginning of the page of the book? You know, because <laughs> sometimes they have it at the or end. Or the end. Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I feel you uh, on that one, um, getting started. And in a, in a similar vein, I actually heard, um, can't remember which release, whether it was Viz or Yen. One of them originally tried when they imported manga into the United States to re-present them in the uh, Western mm-hmm. way of reading. Mm-hmm. And the fan blowback was so bad they didn't do it again. I yeah, I do know. Actually, I read about that. I, I yeah, I remember that. Actually, as a matter of fact, they yeah, that had a huge blowback. That they do it sometimes now, but usually for titles like manga titles that are, I guess, a uh, they're like so popular that you can enjoy them. It doesn't matter how the format's presented. Yeah. So it's like, it's a safe, a safe bet or something that's a little more, uh, Western oriented or creative. Right. Right. Cause like Yen Press, yeah. believe it or not, has a manga called, uh, Sekiro, uh, the side story to Hanbei's, uh, uh, life, uh, Hanbei the immortal or whatever. And that one's presented in Western format. You read from right to left. And everything, huh. I, I believe. If it, if it wasn't that one, it was another book. But I think it was. I think it was that one. I'm not too sure. Yeah, but, but yeah, they do it yeah, every once in a while. Yeah, every once in a while. But it, yeah, they they don't do it uh, like they thought they would be doing it. Which hey, just means faster turnaround time when you gotta mm-hmm. reset the press. So yeah, very um, true. Very true. I have yeah, a couple right. of questions actually because since you've yeah. read this son, uh, I wanted to ask: is is it like taking part of the setting from Fantasia? Like, does it show Mickey's master? Is he that old wizard that was in the movie Fantasia? Because that was all wizardry in a sense. I don't yeah, know if it's the it, same, if it's it, different. It's, it's 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 similar enough that you could have the feeling that it is. Uh-huh. Um, I, I think that there's some definitely some changes in the lines that you know you could say it's the same person or it could be somebody else. And, and remember, and in Fantasia, we only get to see the the basically the wizard cellar <laughs> or workshop so uh-huh, uh-huh. um uh, but it it you you do get a fantasia vibe um out of it um because you know nice mickey is a wizard there you go yep um, 
Yeah, that's why I asked. Yes. I mean, yeah, sheesh, so, that's more welcoming. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you get a you get a you get a feeling for it, um, and uh, you know, it's like I said, it it it. it it's a warm and fuzzy kind of feeling, a very simple story. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's like spending time with some old friends. So, yeah, it's it's a good way to to, to either get into manga or get that to be nostalgic like, you feel. Know what? Yeah, yeah, the I good old times. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, it, it 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 yeah, it's it's a it's a like I said, great great place to start. Uh, so, uh, you got anything else for us or? Uh, you know, is this? This is basically it. I mean, I will go ahead and mention here in the podcast for all of you that are watching. Make sure to check out our YouTube channel because I am going to have a video gift guide coming out for Viz Media and Yen Press releases for 2020. So I personally handpicked some manga that I've read over the year um, because I had a lot of time to read considering 2020 was a, a pain in the butt and we weren't had doing to, a lot of traveling yeah, yeah not 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 doing so much traveling a lot of events are canceled so i wasn't doing traveling or doing any kind of writing and press events and coverages for this whole year <laughs> so i was that i sucks. was i you know it sucks but at the same time i was able to read some manga and i actually got through a lot so keep an eye out on the youtube channel at honey's animes for those videos from viz media and yen press i hope you guys enjoy them all righty well thank you uh thank you fonzi for taking the time to you know sit with us over this holiday week and uh that wraps up this episode of that time i tuned into a podcast just to listen to someone shill for a publisher and we remind you that this product has been made possible with the cooperation of viz media yen press seven seas entertainment kodanasha and most of all honey's anime the place for the anime enthusiast until next time for Fonzie and myself we thank you for listening and keep reading